Welcome back to Carnadies.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video, we're going to be looking at the phrase, one man's modus ponens is another man's modus tollens, a la one man's trash is another man's treasure. So, in philosophy, sometimes you'll hear someone say, one man's modus ponens is another man's modus tollens, or one woman's modus ponens is another woman's modus tollens, or just one man's modus ponens and imply the rest. This video will give a quick definition of this phrase and teach you how to use it yourself. So, first off, modus ponens and modus tollens are different argument forms. Modus ponens works like this. P, some statement P. P implies Q, if P, then Q. If that first statement is true, then some other statement must be true. Therefore, we can conclude Q. If we have those first two premises, we can conclude that Q. For example, one might say, it is raining. If it's raining, then it is cloudy. Therefore, it is cloudy. Modus tollens, on the other hand, works the other way. We take as our first premise not Q, we take the same middle premise that P implies Q, and we conclude the opposite. Therefore, it's not the case that P. So one might say, it is not cloudy. If it's raining, then it must be cloudy. Therefore, it is not raining. Check out the 100 Days of Logic for quick videos on how to use these different things in kind of formal logical arguments. To understand the phrase, imagine that I have an argument of the form P, P implies Q, therefore Q. Good classic modus ponens. I have my arguments for P, and P implies Q, and therefore I think I can conclude Q. I think, I think I'm justified in holding P, and P implies Q, and so I can conclude Q. In response, someone might come, and instead of questioning my specific premises, or the validity of the argument form, might offer an argument that that Q is false, but agree that P does imply Q, and therefore conclude that P must be false, and not pick a specific problem with my argument for P, but rather say that because Q is clearly false, this is actually a modus tollens, and so your P must be false. They've just turned my modus ponens into a modus tollens. One example of this comes from epistemology. Here's the academic skeptic's original argument. So premise one, it's possible that you're in the matrix. Premise two, if it's possible that you're in the matrix, you do not know that you have a hand in front of your face because that hand could be by your side or you could just be a brain in a vat. Therefore, you do not know that you have a hand in front of your face. G.E. Moore famously argued against this by denying the conclusion and turning the argument into a modus tollens. In other words, you know that you have a hand in front of your face. It is possible, if it's possible you're in the matrix, you do not know you have a hand in front of your face. Therefore, it is not possible that you are in the matrix. The key feature of this style of argument is that the implication is left untouched, but there is disagreement on the other two statements, and you take the assertion of a conclusion, you deny that conclusion, and therefore run the argument backwards in the other direction to deny that initial first premise. In these situations, the merits of the arguments must be judged on the evidence for the premises, either P or not Q. So in our epistemology example, you would have to judge the merits, them on the merits of Moore's argument for the claim that he has a hand in front of his face or that he knows he has a hand in front of his face, and the claim that it's possible that you are in the matrix. Since the arguments are both equally valid, logically valid, though they can't both be sound. If someone said, it's raining, and therefore it's cloudy, a modus ponens, and another person said, it is not cloudy, and therefore it's not raining, modus tollens, we would say that one man's modus ponens is another man's modus tollens. They agree on the implication, but disagree on the P and the Q. One quick note. If you're very convinced by both the argument for P and the argument for not Q, you can always take the quote-unquote third way out of this kind of argument. By denying the implication, P implies Q itself. For example, arguing that sometimes it rains and it is sunny. But you run the risk of making an enemy of both sides of the debate, since that's the one thing, the only thing, that they agree on. So the next time you see someone flip someone else's argument around on them by denying their conclusion and running the argument backwards, 
you can acknowledge them by saying one man's modus ponens is another man's modus tollens. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org. If you want more content like this, feel free to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and as always, stay skeptical, everybody.